What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to another Warframe video. So I've got an invigorated Ash set up for you today, where our crit chance is going very high. This is basically some of the highest crit chance that's possible in the game. Uh, and I'm not even stacking everything up today. You technically could stack on a little bit more crit chance. Um, but we've got over... We're already past guaranteed red crits. We're at guaranteed, like, tier 4 crits. Uh, if I was to use the Adars on the Avenger, I'd think it'd be, like, guaranteed, like, tier 5 crits, basically. But, yeah, we're going to go over a, uh, you know, my old one of my old favorite melee weapons as well and just go over the whole setup. But before we get into it, make sure you're subbed to this channel see when all the videos go up. Uh, we'll be getting Veil Breaker info next week, and you bet... Uh, you definitely bet I will be covering that stuff the day it comes out. We'll also be live streaming it on the live stream channel as well. Uh, so definitely go give that a follow. Following is free and subbing here is free as well. Easy way to support the channel. All right, so the setup we're going for today, we have a special invigoration for Ash. Uh, so if you don't have, if you don't know how to get access to these, it is a RNG thing every week. Once you hit rank five with the uh, Die Most Open World Syndicate, the Necrolisk, uh, go to the Sun NPC and buy the Helmet Invigoration segment at rank five. Or just pick it as a rank up reward. You can do that too. Um, every week you get random choices. And this one we got 200% increased melee crit chance and 75% ability efficiency for Ash and Ash Prime. Only lasts for a week. Now, the ability efficiency thing is really not as important. Um, I actually went with Gloom on here because Gloom's a pretty high energy drain ability. Um, but we're mostly just focusing on the crit chance buff. And as you can see, we also got Smoke Shadow on here. Smoke Shadow is going to give yourself and your teammates increased critical chance wall invisible. It doesn't show up on the UI saying it works on you, but it actually does give you increased critical chance. So between our Invigoration and Smoke Shadow, 350% increased crit chance with, without even taking into account uh, the mods on the weapon. So, um, yeah. And then as far as the rest of the stuff, like, I, I put I don't think I cast Gloom in my test run. I would go on on this. But um, you could technically like, take off, like, Prime Flow if you have efficiency like this and then go with something else. But... For the purposes of this, it didn't really matter. Um, we got Seeking Shuriken in case we want to remove enemy armor. I went for Corrosive with this setup, so we're actually going to be uh, melting enemies even with armor. So, whatever. Um, and since we're using the Jat Kusar, weapon that I haven't used in a while, but actually worked out perfectly here. Um, this thing has really, really high crit chance and crit damage, but really, really low attack speed. So you want to make sure you're modding for attack speed somewhere. We've got an attack speed Riven here. Um, if you don't have an attack speed Riven, just put Prime Fury in that slot. But as you can see, without Blood Rush even stacked up, we've got 177% crit chance. And I went with an even higher crit chance build, 254 on this build instead. So, um, yeah, let's just get some gameplay on the screen. Uh, and you can see, like, basically what you can expect with a setup like this. Uh, millions of damage, uh, you know, red crits. And with all this attack speed, like I said, this thing is really slow without attack speed. We've got Arcane Strike on our frame, giving 60% attack speed. And we've got our Jack Kusar Krita Akradra giving us another 59% attack speed. So if you don't use attack speed on this thing, you will not be killing as fast at all. Um, this thing is really, really bottlenecked by attack speed, and especially the stance and combos. You need attack speed on this thing extremely badly. So um, yeah, strike is a must on Ash. And uh, if you're playing Wisp, I guess you technically wouldn't need to, but I, I, I'd say maybe still go for it. So you're yeah, running for Corrosive here, good against Acolytes. Gonna kill the Acolyte in about like three or four hits. Um, and everything else is going to die in about one hit. Uh, we technically have an epitaph for viral proccing as well, as we are mining for corrosive. And, um, yeah, so the idea of this setup is going to just be, you know, mashing the light attack button. If you have this much crit chance on your Ash Prime, you technically could go for, like, a heavy attack glaive throw build. And I'll probably showcase the simulacrum really quick here, uh, before we, you know, finish the video off. But, um, yeah, I went with this because I haven't used this thing in forever. There's a three million right there. Um, and this thing actually can red crit without this buff, but it just makes it even higher tier red crits. If you guys didn't know how, when you go, like, the way that crits work in this game, zero to 100 is a chance to get a yellow crit. 100 to 200 is a guaranteed yellow with a chance at orange. Uh, two, 200 is guaranteed orange. 200 to 300 is guaranteed orange with a chance of red. And then once you go past that, once you get like 300 plus, it's always gonna be red crit. But it's still giving you more damage, technically, if you go above 300, if you get that lucky roll. Because it reapplies the crit damage again. So you could basically consider those, like, redder crits. Or, I, I kind of wish they just changed the color of it, because I don't think you could even change the color customization of those type of red crits in-game. Um, but that is actually what we're achieving here. That's why the numbers seem, like, a little bit all over the place. Um, not only does this stance have multi-hits and weird multipliers, and, like, all the follow-through and all that, but we're viral proccing, and we're technically getting tier 4 uh, crits sometimes here, too. So... 
Um, yeah, pretty good for Steel Path Grenier killing. Um, of course, like I said, you could tech, you could try out a full heat build on Jack Kusar, um, but it doesn't really have the best status chance. So you'd probably want to take off like this and then this and then put on like status chance mods there instead. But like I said, I don't really recommend that. And you want to put on Weeping Wound somewhere too. Um, but that's going to be up to personal preference. Let's just quickly show it in the Simulacrum. Uh, you know, I've got Steel Charge in here too, so we're doing a little bit more damage than if you didn't have Steel Charge equipped, but there's a lot of, there's a lot more buffs than just that we're rocking here, so. Um, you can be Perma-Invis with Ash as long as you just recast. And we're already getting red crits without even a big multiplier. We're at 3x multiplier getting red crits there, so. Kind of what you can expect here, now they just die in one hit without even a full, uh, fully multiplied, uh, combo multiplier, so. Yeah, this is what you could expect, and of course, um, you know, once you get to 12x, it's more crit chance too, so. Really, really good stuff. Uh, this thing is really slow, but hits very hard. I think it is one of the highest crit chance weapons in the game, actually. Um, and then here's Gloom. Not a very large Gloom range, but that's what I, like I said, I wouldn't even cast Gloom in my, uh, my, uh, my mission showcase, because you don't even need Gloom on Ash for the most part. It's just kind of funny and cool. Um, so yeah, let's go over some heavy attack options here. Uh, I'm going to show the Glaive Prime. The Glaive Prime can red crit without, uh, without these buffs, but it's about the red crit really hard. So there is also that. Um, I So as far as videos coming out in the next couple days, guys, I'm going to do the Nightwave video tomorrow. We're going to have uh, a top 10 list coming out next week, and I've got some more ideas as well. Uh, the, the biggest thing here is waiting on that Veilbreaker info. Um, I, I, I'm really hoping, because also, uh, don't forget, on console, we got that Stack Decay bug as well. It still hasn't gotten fixed on console. Um, so I, if I play, I wouldn't even be playing a console right now. If I was a console player, I'd be like, I'm going to go play something else because you need to fix this stack decay bug. It's been months. Um, but yeah, once we get Veilbreaker info, uh, hopefully it makes things exciting again and we can see like what this end, like D is calling an end game, like how end game is actually going to be. So we got the Glaive Prime here, uh, not a crit chance Riven or anything like that. Riven's probably not even worth running, honestly. And we've got 114 before we apply Smoke Shadow. So let's see how this goes. Of course, we're not running any Blood Rush on here. You technically could run Blood Rush on here if you were a crazy person. Okay, which button is it again to blow it up? There we go, there we go. All right, so no red crits. Um, I, that might have been a red crit right there. So it's pretty standard Glaive stuff. That didn't even look that impressive. Um, let, let's see, one more weapon that could be kind of fun here. Let's see what we got. Um, oh, how about the Pennant? The Pennant could be good. I usually use the Pangolin Prime with Ash, but I want to change it up a little bit here. Uh, as we have, you know, even more crit chance than usual. Okay, so with this pennant build, ooh, here we go. 206% crit chance before Smoke Shadow is applied. And apparently I have Dispatch Override on here for some reason. I think we were goofing off. Uh, we'll try it out anyway. Let's see how this goes. 206. It will be higher than that. So you should see lots of red crits with this heavy attack here. And it's a guaranteed slash proc too. So Ash's passive makes slash proc stronger. So, ooh, it did not look very good actually. <laughs> Maybe that's the follow through stat right there. Oh, you know what it is? I took off, I think I took off initial combo. Okay. Yeah, I took off initial combo, so it's not as good as it's supposed to be. Um, still pretty decent for what it is. Uh, I don't think she even got to take the slash proc that time. Yeah, I was using dispatch override for a speed increase build. Um, this thing is nasty too. I think I have an old video of it on the channel. Um, you should definitely check, check out the, the pendant. It comes from Railjack, I believe. And uh, yeah, nasty, nasty. You can, now if you have a build like this, it's always gonna give you uh, you know, good heavy attack multipliers, and we have really high crit chance with this setup. So this is more realistic here. Red crit. Now remember, follow through is a terrible stat in this game that makes everything anti-fun. And there you go. So, not exactly the best, but usable for sure. Alright guys, I'll see you next video. I just want to do this for history's sake. It is a very nice invigoration, um, and it, it's pretty fun, because Ash is already like a melee master. And this just makes him, like, an overkill melee master. He actually already was an overkill melee master. So this is just completely unnecessary, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Peace.